fantastic. Good morning, everybody. The time is now 8.30. We will commence the uh, Corpus Christi Regional Trans Transportation Authority Board of Directors meeting. I call it to order. Well, John just walked in. He can help us out with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Do they still teach that in school? Yes. Right. Item two is roll call. Uh, Secretary, I'm going to have Dina take care of that. Yes, sir. Thank you, Chairman. Thanks, sir. President. Hey, guys, there's some pretty bad background noise. Static. Please make sure you mute your mics unless you're speaking. Dan Leindecker. Can you all hear me? No. Here. Yes. Hello, test. Test. Can you hear me? My phone noise is really bad, Dina, but I think you called my name. This is Lynn Allison, and I'm present. Thank you, Lynn. I know I've seen Mike Reeves, I've seen Dan Line Decker. Ann Bowman. Present. Thank you, Ann. Patricia Dominguez. Ana Jimenez. Glenn Martin. I know this. He's. Have we seen pictures of him up there? Eloy Salazar. Here. Philip Skabarsik. Present. Matt Wilbright. I understand Matt is in. Oh, he's here. There you are. <laughs> Mr. Cor uh, Mr. Chairman, we have a quorum. Thank you. Yeah, we are seeing hearing some feedback here as well. Um, if okay. Well, if, if you have an issue hearing us, please uh, let us know. And uh, before we start yeah. making motions, uh, just David, please state David your name. Out real bad. Again. That was Glenn. I could barely hear him, I think. Yeah. Item three is safety noise briefing. Kind of stopped a little bit. I think somebody was uh, on there, was in a vehicle maybe moving. So we, if everyone mutes, I think we'll be okay, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mike. Uh, item three, safety briefing. Everyone going? Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Mike Rendon doing the safety briefing. Uh, if there's an emergency, uh, board of directors will exit through the back door in the kitchen. There's two other exits here in this board of, board of directors also. Um, you Directors will report to the uh, clock tower adjacent to our transfer station. Dino will account for all of you. Now I'll make sure everybody exits this uh, room properly. Uh, during the emergency, please do not utilize the elevator and do not return unless the all clear has been given. And if we have to shelter in place, we will shelter in the west side stairwell. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Item four, receipt of conflict of interest affidavits. I have not seen any. Uh, has any been given to you, Dina? No, sir, I have not received any either. Okay, thank you. Item five, opportunity to Item five, opportunity for public comment. There's a three minute limit, no discussion. Um, has anybody signed up for public comment? Anyone like to sign it up? Or can we wait for the public to come in? Uh, I will currently open it up to the public right now. If anyone is interested in speaking. Moving forward. Item six, safety and security award recognitions. A, CCPD Officer of the Year. Gilbert Casas. Good morning, all, again. Uh, this morning, we'll recognize the uh, Security Officer of the Year and the C 
CCRTA Security Police Officer of the Year. Can you? A little bit, yes. Okay. A little louder, sir. Thank you. Uh, you guys can come in. First, we'll do uh, Security Officer uh, Security Officer of the Year, uh, Mr. Michael Perry. Can you stand over here, please? Uh, Mr. Perry has 22 years' experience in the security guard industry. Uh, has worked uh, all over Texas, Houston, uh, Austin, San Antonio, uh, Dallas, Victoria, and Puerto Vaca, uh, to, to mention a few. Mr. Perry has passion for what he does here at, at CCRTA. Uh, has worked for us for four and a half years. Uh, the tenants trust him. Our employees uh, love him. And um, I can say that um, the criminal element uh, don't like him because he does his job very, very well. Mr. Perry uh, cares about his job. Uh, when he's here and I leave at 5 or 6 o'clock in the evenings, I know this area is well secured. Mr. Perry will find any door that's un left unsecured and keeps uh, Ms. Sharon and Tomas busy because if there's anything wrong, uh, lighting or anything that has to be fixed, he reports it immediately. Uh, and there's a lot other mo more reasons that uh, Mr. Perry is the officer, security officer of the year. Um, there is uh, our meetings every morning at, at 8.30. Uh, something happens prior. Uh, I report what this uh, gentleman does for us here. Mr. Perry, thank you for your service. Thank you for having passion for CCRTA employees, staff, and tenants. We really appreciate your work. He would also get a $50 gift card for his great performance. Do you want to say something? I'd like to thank each and every one of y'all for taking the time to present this award to me. Uh, I will continue to do an outstanding job for RTA. And uh, Mr. Rendon and I, we, like he said, we work closely together. I tried, to, I tried my best to protect everyone here from all harm. And, uh, and report everything that is wrong with this building, as he said. And I thank, thank y'all, each and every one, each and every one of y'all, very much for taking this time to do so, to listen to me. I appreciate you all. Thank you. If I can add just a few comments, officer on this. When he's on duty, he has a lot of experience that he demonstrates. Mr. Chairman, can I just say, I wish I could see a picture of him or zoom in on his face so I know how to thank him in person at some point. I just, I don't have a visual on who we're congratulating. That's so frustrating. No one's fault, but I would love to be able to follow up in person at some point. Thank you for your comments. Uh, we'll, we will have a photo of him uh, on the Friday notes. So. They'll circulate a photo. Thank you. Uh, directly. And for the police officer of the year goes to Mr. Gilbert Casas. He's a 10-year U.S. Navy veteran, has worked in law enforcement for 19 years, four and a half in Robstown where he started his police uh, career, and two and a half with a precinct five uh, constable also in Robstown. So in the last 12 years, he has been a senior officer with CCPD. Uh, officer Casas worked for us on, on the rover for the last three years. He's a uh, excellent uh, communicator with our customers, our bus operators, and an excellent, and I mean excellent, report writer. I get really good details of when Mr. Casas is out there and, and uh, communicates or visits with, uh, with our uh, customers. 
he gets detail of you know who they are names where they're going you know if they need anything in law enforcement so he's uh, very approachable uh, also he treats the homeless population with compassion and respect um, he gets a lot of good information from them becomes uh, good friends with them but also tells them if they're not utilizing <laughs> the uh, service to to move move along uh, overall a great police officer and we are uh, lucky to have Mr. Casas working for us on, on the rover. You know, even business owners in our area, especially on the uh, Port and Horn area, he goes in and visits with them and communicates with them what, what's going on, gives them their business card. Hey, I'm here in the area. Uh, if you need anything, call me. Uh, also, uh, that's the type of, it, of police officers that we want to represent uh, CCRTA. And again, for the Officer of the Year, Mr. Gilbert Casas. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the board and Mr. CEO, good morning. Uh, thank you very much for uh, bestowing this award upon me. It, it means a lot to me. Uh, since I was four years old, I knew I was going to be a police officer and serve the community that I grew up in. This is just a small way for me to give back to everybody, and thank you for allowing me and giving me the opportunity to work and represent the RTA in the community. Absolutely correct. Sir, uh, on just myself, on behalf of myself, on behalf of the board, I wanted to thank you and, and uh, Mr. Perry, who's already departed us, um, just for all their service, your dedication, your work ethic, to not only the agency, but this community. Uh, we really appreciate having you around here, sir. Thank you. I was, uh, it just so happened that I was uh, part of the APTA board uh, director's uh, meeting yesterday, uh, virtual meeting, and the topic was policing in and around transit authority uh, throughout the nation and the importance of, of having competent you know, uh, personnel on hand that can work within the community. Um, so I, you know, we have a top-notch team. I'm glad to have them on board. Oh. Sure. <coughs> Item seven is discussion possible action to approve the Board of Directors meeting minutes of January 6th. Is there a motion to approve the meeting minutes of January 6th? So moved. So moved. I have a motion from Director Wilbright. We have a second from Vice Chairman Reeves. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. I'm assuming you're in favor. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Motion passes. Item uh, eight is consent items. The following items are routine or administrative in nature and have been discussed previously by the board or the committees. The board has been furnished with support documentation on these items. Um, I have a list of items A through D. Does any board member wish to uh, pull any of these items for further discussion? Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the uh, consent agenda items as written. Reeves. Thank you, Vice Chairman Reeves. Is there a second? I'll second. second. This is Glenn. Glenn, I'm going to give that one to Phillips Kabarchik. Thank you, sir. Any That's further discussion? <laughs> okay. Thank you, sir. Doesn't say anymore. <laughs> uh, uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Motion passes. Item nine is update on CCRTA's response to COVID-19. Mr. CEO. Good morning, board members. Well, the uh, the race to uh, to vaccinate is underway. Uh, there there seems to be uh, a limited number of inventory right now. However, the government is pursuing uh, active and, and mass production of quality vaccines to uh, to vaccinate our community. We've, uh, we've been very busy trying to get our employees uh, that want 
the drug to be able to get the vaccine, and we have been uh, communicating extensively with our workforce to ensure that uh, there is uh, ample opportunity to, to get off from work and be able to get your vaccine. Uh, we are coordinating with the, the county judge to secure a vaccine for our employees. As you'll see in a little bit, uh, we have around 50 employees still to vaccinate that want the vaccine. Uh, unfortunately, there's not much advance warning <coughs> to, uh, to get in line and, and get your, your vaccination, uh, but we are working and we're working to have our employees available <coughs> immediately uh, should there be a vaccine available. And we work with, uh, with the, all the employees to ensure that we have uh, the ability to get to Robstown uh, to obtain the service. Vaccination status for our company is we've vaccinated 74 employees already. Uh, 46 have uh, requested that. That's the, the round number 50 that I mentioned. Uh, we have 56 employees that do not want the vaccine. It is not a mandatory requirement. <coughs> so we've just noted that uh, they've signed documents that say they're not interested. <coughs> MV has 23 vaccinated. They have 19 that would like to receive it. And they have 42 that do not want it as of January 28th of this year. Let's uh, go back one. The, the young man in the, uh, the blue shirt, they had to talk a lot to to get him to sit still, but uh, he, he went on ahead and took his vaccine shot. So, mm -hmm. All right. The, um, we work with the community leaders to attempt to secure more vaccine. Uh, we, uh, we've worked with Spahn, we've worked with Mesa County, we've been in contact with the city and others. Uh, we, uh, we want to ensure that uh, the, the shots are provided and the second shots are also available. We communicate and educate the employees about the vaccine so that they have all the, dis the discussion matters in front of them and they're cognizant of what's happening on the vaccination front. We, uh, we continue to provide uh, our uh, safe and secure environment for our employees and customers. Free masks are provided to all our riders. Uh, there are dispensers in every bus the RTA has. Uh, we continue our deep cleaning of buses, equipment, and facilities. We have extra security officers on site. We, uh, we keep our employees aware of all the prevention efforts for COVID-19. And we monitor our employees' health and welfare to ensure that uh, they are able to adequately analyze any symptoms they may have. And uh, we provide all the PPE and equipment and uh, do all the things that uh, the protocols that have been suggested, mask, uh, hygiene, and social distancing. As of, as of today, we've received two portions of federal funding that I'm very proud to be uh, one of those entities that receive funding. Last year, we received a little over $60 million. This year, we've received $6.8 million, which goes to the operating account. The intent of this $6.8 million is to keep people working, and that helps us to do our job and to be able to help our subordinate uh, vendors that provide us the services that we need. Unfortunately, ridership is still low. It's uh, averaging around 6,500, and to refresh your memory, it used to be 15, 16, 17,000. So we're at less than half right now. Uh, there has been some increase because of the university getting back online, although it's not to the full extent that it is, and some improved activity like wonderful days that we talk about some days. Vaccinate and mitigate, that's the effort that we'll continue. We will continue to do everything we can to provide a health and safety welfare for the community. Uh, we'll even take former Longhorns and allow them to get the vaccine as well. It took us a, a longer time to get this young man to sit still. <laughs> but all, all, is, all is going forward well. Um, we, uh, we 
ask that, uh, that the board continue to support us and that uh, we, uh, when given the opportunity, we will um, notify the Navy of any special efforts that we're doing. Uh, it is a, an item that we discuss every day so that we are current with what the industry is doing to prevent the spread of this, uh, of this virus amongst our community. Again, thank you for your time. Thank you. Is there any comments or responses for Jorge on the COVID-19? Let's choose one. Are some of the vaccines that last picture look like those here? Are some of those being done here at the office? No, not here. They're uh, mostly at the uh, the, the box office. Okay. Thank you. We uh, we Spawn started us off, thank God, and uh, now we have it going. We're part of the Noasis consideration. Right. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I have a comment. Director Jimenez, is that you? Yes, it is. I'd just like to compliment Jorge and staff for such a wonderful job on their efforts to keep everybody, customers and staff, safe. Um, your impacts are, are, are noted, and uh, I appreciate that safety is a priority. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Item 10, update on 2021 system changes. Mr. Robinson, how you doing, sir? Oh. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Morning, uh, members of the board. Doing great this morning. Doing real good. Right. Hope you're all doing good too. We got the Super Bowl coming up on Sunday, so that's a good thing, right? So. No Super Bowl party, sir. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> party for one is a check. <laughs> yeah. Maybe next Super Bowl. <laughs> okay. Okay. Today we're going to talk about an update on the 2021 system changes. My name is Gordon Robinson, the director of planning. The board party for this item is public image and transparency. In terms of our current makeup of the system, we have a pilot Cummins E shuttle, the Surge, which you're all are well aware of at the uh, Texas A&M Corpus Christi campus. We have the pilot Flex 93 service that also serves the campus down in that area. Also provides uh, flexible options for riders to get down to Flower Bluff to go grocery shopping, to medical appointments down there, and so forth. We have 10 commuter express routes, which are our fastest travel routes. For example, uh, routes 50, 51, 53 serve CCAD in the Naval Air Station down here from our outer areas in Gregory and Robstown, Cal Allen. Um, other routes serve different parts of our service area into uh, the station here. Uh, we also uh, have some pilots that we've tried over the last couple years. Um, 95 is something I'm going to talk about. We're going to start that up again this year to serve Port Aransas. We have 25 fixed routes, and that's our services that go up and down our local streets primarily, stopping at various stops to get our folks to where they need to go. Uh, we have two rural on-demand services out there in the Western Nueces County area. Uh, we have a demand response shuttle, which is a FlexiB in Port Aransas. With all that, we have 1,375 bus stops that, that help serve those different services. V-Line Paratransit, of course, is another uh, major service for us to get folks to where they need to go. Uh, it's a qualification, of course, where you have to become eligible for the service. Van pool services, we have 12 vans right now. Um, Remembering back before the pandemic, we were up to 25, so um, that's something we hope to get up to again one day. Gordon, how many flex routes do you have? You just at 93 there? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. In terms of uh, what we accomplished in 2020, the autonomous shuttle, of course, is a big, big accomplishment for us and, and the riders. Also, uh, we navigated multiple, and I mean multiple, service adjustments during the COVID pandemic, and I know um, we're all well aware of of what that means in terms of scaling our uh, services to meet the ridership demand. We rerouted Route 37 to uh, provide more travel options to Momentum Campus and Texas A&M University. We also um, operated the Route 66 service for the first time, um, which was <coughs> a service designed to get folks uh, in the Viking Islander program between the campuses, between Del Mar and Texas A&M Corpus Christi. We uh, continued our pilot Route 93 Flex service and we expanded the Route 95 service uh, to actually serve the Southside Station. So that's something we're going to look at again uh, to create a broader workforce, bring more folks into Port Aransas. So if we can go out a little further here in our, in our core service area, we'll get more folks that want to work out there. In 2019 versus 2020, you can see how we compared with uh, ridership 
service hours and service miles. In 2020, with the pandemic, we were down about 43.1% overall. Uh, service hours down as well as we uh, ended services earlier. And then service miles uh, goes in line with that. In terms of 2021 now, as compared to where we ended up in 2020, you can see that we're expecting a, an increase in passenger trips as more folks get vaccinated at this point in time and you know, more folks hire and employment becomes back to more of a somewhat new normal uh, status. We expect ridership to increase. And so we're looking at possibly up to about 35% <coughs> in, in terms of service hours. No increase there because in 2020, we did run almost a full set of service hours for about two and a half months of the year. So what that tells you on the screen right now for service hours is that we're going to be continuing to end the services earlier. And that's why we're seeing a little bit of a, a dip there as compared to 2020. In terms of service miles, you can see an uh, increase there. We are still navigating multiple detours and construction projects, and that's part of that as well. Uh, we're having to deviate outside of our route alignment. In terms of uh, 2021 and some of the service plan highlights we're thinking of right now, Route 28 is something we did back on January 18th where we extended it down uh, Leopard over to uh, Navigation, and that serves the Coastal Bend Food Bank as we have a new stop in that area. Another thing uh, that we're uh, working on right now is uh, new pilot flex services. So we've learned a lot from our first one over there at Route 93 at the Tech Scene and Culture Campus. We see a lot of uh, good things out of that in terms of ridership and also just positive feedback from customers. So it's something we want to try where we have other gaps in the system, which is in Annaville, Tulis and Midway, uh, also Cal Allen. So it's something we're working on right now. We're, we're evaluating. Uh, the best solution for that area. We're also preparing um, guidelines to help us with policy decisions, including fares for those services. In addition, we're proposing to do a 980A on-demand service, which is something that you've been hearing about throughout the nation. It's um, utilizing up to three to five vehicles, we're thinking at this time, to serve that evening period where we do have a gap right now, where folks may be looking to get home from work around 9 p.m. or 10 p.m. We can fulfill that need by getting uh, shuttle-like services out there with these vehicles and uh, picking folks up at bus stops or, or transfer stations and getting them uh, to near their uh, home or, or reaching them near their place of employment. I'd like to comment on this area here is a new transit initiative that we're looking to undertake. This, this is not on-demand service. This is not where we call it the uh, scheduled something this is the ability to access transportation and it's not on a fixed schedule. This is yeah, right, right. something that is supposed to be when and when is where you need to be. It's serious that, that we're even taking steps to look at enhancing this route with the Liberty part of this year. Now, if you come from work or you get to Tulis, after hours. Mm -hmm. okay. um, also, uh, we're well aware of new developments such as the Salvation Army uh, homeless shelter that's going to be uh, located over there at 16th and Hancock, over here uh, by the Crosstown Freeway. So we're um, working with the Salvation Army right now and on um, making sure that there's adequate transit service in that area. Also, uh, the Veterans Affairs is building a new outpatient clinic over there by West Point Road and SBIB. Uh, both of these are opening in 2021, and we do have some initial plans to, to uh, serve those adequately to make sure we're getting folks to where they need to go. In terms of other things uh, that we're planning to do, Fort Air's uh, transfer station, of course, uh, is going to be rebuilt. And with that, uh, we're going to try to keep the services out in that area uh, by the station as long as we can, as long as it's safe for our riders, as long as uh, we can stay there before the construction really starts. So we, we're ready, we're prepared to adjust the services in that area, to move them a little bit outside the construction zone, but we're not going to be too far away, so it's still going to be available to our riders, the eight different bus routes that serve that station. So we're all excited about that, though, because it's a definite improvement. In terms of uh, other things, <coughs> you can see uh, we're going to continue the autonomous shuttle at the Texas a and campus. We're going to uh, continue uh, Route 60, which has been a uh, 
high ridership service for us, and, and especially in normal times uh, before the pandemic. And then also the uh, flex service over there, Route 93, where we're using those, those services. One thing we're looking at doing, because these are beginning to be more successful, they're meeting our performance standards, we're going to go ahead and make those more of a permanent status in terms of the flex service now. And also, uh, we're going to formally replace the Route 63, which is something we operated before with the university. Uh, Route 93 replaced that service, but we have to follow the FTA guidelines and formally um, replace the service with the 93. Have you seen any demand for Del Mar? This one's really servicing Texas A&M students. Uh, any, any demand for Del Mar trying to go to each campus here for students? We, that's what we, uh, actually, excellent point, Mr. Chairman. That's, our, that's my next uh, bullet okay. point here, that's Route 66. <laughs> so that's something we did kick off uh, about a year ago or so. The ridership was, um, was there, but it wasn't um, <coughs> meeting our standards in terms of our, our loads that we were looking for. So we want to do something a little bit different with that service. We're going to try something a little bit different this year, but then the pandemic put a halt on those plans. So we're, we're continuing to uh, talk with the Del Mar and the Texan and folks to uh, see when a good time would be to start up the service. We're actually looking at um, possibly next fall as a, as a potential opportunity. Gordon, quick question. Um, what is the current ridership on the autonomous shuttle and what's our current cost to continue doing this for another year? The current ridership is about a handful of riders a day, roughly, on okay. average. Uh -huh. And I mean, you've been in that vehicle, it's pretty small. Are they able to social distance in there? I mean, how many people can be in that vehicle right now at a time, safely? We, yes, we, we are able to social distance in the vehicle. We have, we have the uh, attendant. But then we have up to two spaces where they're at different areas of the vehicle. So the most we can have in that at any time is two riders. What's the cost for 2021? Cost? I don't have that in front of me at this moment. Uh, but we can get you that information. We can get that before the next committee meeting. That'd be important. Sure. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. It hasn't changed. It's just the same phone number. Uh, met metrics are very different at two people at a time versus eight and a handful a day means mm -hmm. it's not being used very much. Thanks. Okay, uh, continue on here. Uh, Route 95 is the service that you uh, are most likely familiar with. That's the service that operates from Corpus Christi. I just talked about how we expanded to the south side station, serving this station as well, and then bringing folks out to uh, Ingleside, Ramsey Pass, into Port Ramsey. So that's something we're going to do again. You know, in line with our budget, we uh, are going to operate May 28th, which is roughly Memorial Day weekend. Uh, through October 3rd to uh, extend a little bit past that Labor Day time frame so we can get more folks uh, to work in Port Ramsey. <coughs> so that's something we're excited about as well this year. Other things, um, we have to complete a Title VI service equity analysis now that we've been carrying some services through 2020 into 2021 through a suspension, uh, through suspension status. Uh, Route 30 is one of those and Route 56. And Right now, uh, in terms of the Westside Health Clinic, we have Route 21 that has fairly good frequency that serves that clinic uh, just fine. Uh, we definitely have enough uh, space on that bus. Uh, other things like Route 56, uh, we have Route 29 that operates from Flower Bluff up into this area. So no, no uh, miss of service or no um, degradation of any service along those paths. It's just something we're looking at right now and evaluating to figure out what, what's a better solution. We're also going to be continuing to monitor all the different construction projects out there, so and, and of course adjust our services as we need. In terms of other things, uh, Del Mar South Campus is something we're uh, getting ready for. That's going to be open uh, from what we hear in the spring of 2022. Uh, Carroll High School is another area um, along Saratoga near Castoris that will be opening in the fall of 2022. So we have those on our radar, and we're getting ready to um, more or less finalize plans for one service. Um, would, would be um, serving Carroll High School, which is uh, near that area on Castoris, which is Route 15. Uh, that's, that's most likely going to be the solution. Del Mar South Campus, we're thinking of more of an on-demand uh, approach possibly to start, which would be something that would fill the needs of the ridership at the time with the first initial phase of the campus. And then we might turn that more into a flex service and ultimately it could become a fixed route if the ridership were to increase. Would those be cut-ins like they did with veterans? Yes, the bus kind of cuts in. We're still planning the the, the cut ins. Yes, okay. that's correct. In terms of the vanpole participation, because um, the ongoing COVID pandemic, we're we're not sure what the uh, need's going to be moving forward, but we want to try to increase the program by about ten percent to, to 
keep the program growing. And that uh, concludes my presentation. Thank you, Gordon. Any comments, questions? Thank you, Gordon. This is Lynn Allison. I have a question about the priority boarding for the uh, Porter Andrews route. Did, did we have that last year when this route ran? And how does that work? Uh, yes. The ferry boarding. Okay, yeah. Yeah, we had it last year, uh, and it worked uh, well. You know, <coughs> sometimes uh, the, um, the areas can get fairly congested based on peak demand into Port Aransas or out of Port Aransas. So th there could be some delays at times, but for the most part, it worked uh, uh, the bulk of the time very well where the uh, TechStot uh, staff were able to put us at the front of the line and get us that priority boarding we needed to get across the ferry. Yeah, I'm sure we've all sat in that line for an hour, and, and especially in the spring and summer, and just I'm wondering if there, does TechStat allow for use of, of the shoulder for the um, passenger vehicles to, to move up front, or I'm just wondering how they navigate that long line. <clears throat> yeah, we, every year we uh, revisit this with TechStat and the operations folks over there, so We'll keep working with them and see if there's any other improvements we can garner from that. Mm -hmm. Good, thank you. Any further questions or comments for Gordon? Hearing none, moving on. Item 11, presentations. A, December 2020 financial report. Good morning. Good morning. So this aligns with our board priority of financial transparency. Just for the month highlights, total expenses um, were exceeded revenues of about $120,000. That typically happens the last month. We finish off capital projects and uh, do some expenses before the year closes out. We save usually during the course of the year in the last month to make sure that we stay within budget, but we um, do a little more spending at the end of the month. Our operating revenue is about 110% of budget, and then our operating expense is about 9.5% um, below budget. So the second column is our actual. The first column is our annual budget. The third column is our monthly budget. As you can see, our total revenues was $3.48 million on a budget of about 3.27. Our expenses, 3.6 on a budget of four, $4 million, so about $400,000 savings on expenses on there. And that's where the $120,000 comes in from revenue short of expenses. Revenue. Sorry, Robert, quick question. Am I reading this correctly that the, can you explain the difference between column two and column three again? Column two is our actual expenses for the month. The column three is the budgeted expenses for the month. So column one was an annual budgeted expense. Column three is a is so a we were budgeted budget. a seven hundred and twenty five thousand dollars shortfall. Yep. Yes, sir. And typically that's how the last month is because more expenses come in the last Got month it. and they're okay. savings during the course Thanks. of the year. Our revenues uh, line items, as you can see, um, our passenger services came in about fifty seven percent, eighty seven thousand dollars. Typically we bring in about one hundred fifty three thousand dollars. Plus advertisement came in a little over budget, $14,700. Operating revenue, you see a big increase from there, the 432,000 versus 51 budget, and that 420 of that comes in from our gas rebate that we get in from it. So from our CNG that we use, according to our mile, miles that we run, we get a, a gas rebate for that from each miles that we drive. Usually it's around 500, almost $600,000, but we drive a little bit less miles this year because of the pandemic. Sales tax revenue, that's a projected number. We'll get that actual December number sometime next week, Thursday-ish, uh, $2.4 million. A little bit of a grant assistance rebate that we get back, refunds, um, investment income with our interest rates being low, it only came in at $5,000. Our leases came in at budget, so our total operating comes in at $3 million. Our capital donations, we, monies that we get back are 20% from back from the government or 80% depending on different project. Transfer in for our capital is 146000 
her revenues at $3.48 million. Just kind of a graph of pie chart, about $533,000, uh, 20% goes to purchase transportation. Miscellaneous at 1%, about $32,000. Other supplies, $188,000 to keep our buses on the road and about $63,000 for COVID supplies for the month. Salaries close to $1.1 million at 40%. Benefits $364,000 at 14%. Services $339,000 at 13%. Utilities for the month $52,000 at 2%. And insurance 1% at about $36,000. Our expenses, we had a budget of 2.96, almost $2.97 million, came in at 2.68, about $300,000 savings. And you can see each of the line items um, came in under budget. So our year to date, um, this is the 12th month, so our, our year is complete. Passenger services, so our fares from getting on the bus, our uh, passes, our contracts that we have for with the universities, our total revenue came in about 63% of what we budgeted for our passenger fares. We received 100% collections for the, our Staple Street Center leases, and then we came in about $3 million or 8.43% less of our budget, targeted budget. So a good year of savings. Income statement, our revenue came in at $56.3 million on a budget of 41, and a lot of that overage is because of the CARES grant that we had, the $15.3 million that we came in above it. Expenses at $43 million on a budget of 45. So as you see at the end of the year, between all the revenues and expenses, we're gonna put about $13.2 million down to our bottom line if we were part driven here, which we, are, um, we have a, a positive cash flow of about $13 million this year. <laughs> so this year, we have a positive cash flow of about $13.2 million, $13 million. 15.3 of it was um, CARES Act money, but then we had some added expenses because of CARES for the pandemic. So a very good year so far. We're setting up for a good 2021 with the $6.8 million that we've had secured as well too, so we should have a good year. Revenues by category, uh, $1.1 million on a budget of about $1.8 for our fares. Bus advertisement, $128,000. Our other operating revenue, again, driven by our, our rebate that we get from our CNG, $684,000. Sales tax, that's a very good estimate because December, we're still waiting for that number at $2.4 million, so it's $34.5 million. On a budget of 37.7, the other $33 million was what we were thinking internally, what we might finish at when the pandemic started happening, and we still exceeded what we thought we might finish at. When we hit that $33 million, we were getting a little concerned if we would have to make some type of adjustments to other expenses, but we had a good year so far, so. Our grant federal, 15.3 of that 15.9 is a CARES Act. The other uh, about six, $700,000 comes from preventive maintenance money. Investment income, $181,000. So real quick, Robert, yes, sir. you drew down all the funds already? Or we drew we down all 15.3 by the end of October, yes, sir. We're applying for the 6.8, it's already appropriated, that means the money is there. We have to apply for the grant, just a formality, tell them how much of operating expenses we wanna spend versus capital. Um, and then we'll be able to start draw, drawing down that $6.8 million this year. So $53 million on total operating expense uh, revenues, added again some capital grant donations and transfers in, it comes out to $56.3 million on a budget of $41 million. Kind of a breakdown of how we spent the $15.3 million. We submit $16 million and we have to take reverse or back out our fares that we get in here. So that it's a 15.3 million. We spent 5.7, almost 5.8 on salaries, close to $3 million on benefits, services a million dollars, materials and supplies, masks, everything that we use, sanit sanitizers and all, about $1.4 million. Utilities, about $120,000 insurance almost $64,000 and purchase transportation or beeline about $4.7 million. And we'll give you a similar one once we start drawing down the $6.8 million of how we spend that. Just year to date, where'd the money go? Purchase transportation, $6.6 .6 million at 
Miscellaneous at 1% at 403,000. Other breaks out with $2.3 million to keep our buses on the streets, and then $1.3 million on COVID supplies. Salaries and benefits, about $12.5 million. For salaries, about $5.1 million in benefits. Services, about $3.5 million at 11%. Utilities, $628,000 at 2%. And insurance, a little less than $400,000 at 1%. Our expenses, our actual expenses year to date, is $32.6 million on a budget of 35.6. The only average of that is because of the COVID related expenses in there, or else we would have met our, our expenses for the year. Just a sales tax, how it, how it comes down a trend for, for the last 13 months. Now we have November's actual numbers, because again, we won't get December till next week. In there. So November of 2019, we received 2583000 almost 584000 This last November, we received $2.6 million, so about $32,000 more than last year. Budget-wise, we budgeted three point seven and received two point six, so about a, almost $1.1 million less than what we budgeted. And that's do you, because... Do you have any idea of what that is on online orders? Because, you know, we did a whole lot of online shopping this year. So our sales tax that we received in um, was about, I'll give you that here. We received over the last 12 months, $239,571. Was that from online? That was the online portion? Yes, ma'am. And that was a change of the law that okay, they had in October of last. More than that. Well, it's a small percentage. We don't, we don't get a, a really big percent on there. It's, it's our half cent sales tax on there. So about $240,000 for the year. I'll take any questions. Any questions for um, I Robert? have a question, Robert. Thank you for that. And I feel like the answer is in front of me if I went back through all these slides. But sure. kind of net, net comparison to the losses and revenue and sales tax, how did we end out up covering that? Did the $15.3 million sort of cover that? Or are we still down yes, with ma'am. the 15.3 million? So, so we received about $900,000 less this year than we did last year in sales tax. But the $15.3 million that we had covered that, plus the expenses that we had related to COVID. So we're $13.2 million to the good, a good positive cash flow of $13.2 million for okay. this year. And that also includes the lost revenue and fares and everything. Lost so revenue and fares, uh, sales tax, yes, ma'am. That's really significant. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Thank you. You're welcome. And in fact, in the, in the upcoming months here, probably maybe next month, if not the month after that, I'll come do a budget amendment once with the $16, $6.8 million. We know what we're going to do with it because uh, obviously our, that's going to be a, more revenue than what we anticipated coming in here. So we'll have to do a budget amendment at that point in time. That Robert, I've got a question. Yes, sir. It may be an apples and oranges question, but sure. with, with that being the case, uh, unrelated to, to that item, but a retirement, some kind of additional contribution to our retirement plan, is that something we can do? I mean, I'm not, you don't find yourself in these kind of shoes very often. Uh, Everybody's going to retire at some point, so I've, I'm always looking at trying to figure out how people can enjoy their retirement. I mean, if we find ourselves in a in a good spot, you know, maybe that, and that's you know, a conversation for a later day, I'm sure. But that's something that we could talk to our actuaries about. Right now, the retirement plan is set on how we how we um, put money into it, um, and we do it by the contribution. We come out here and we'll tell you we're going to put in 2.1 million dollars or three. $3.2 million, whatever the case may be. Just like this last year, um, my, my, my years are going to be convoluted here, but we put in $2.5 million to get us to that 95% because we were having a bad year on the, the stock market about 18 months ago or so. So we can, at some point in time, put more money than we anticipate in there. Now, I've had this conversation here. When you start looking, my job is not just to say how we did this month. I was trying to look five years down the road to make sure the day when I leave out of here, Someone says, Oof, we're glad we had that gentleman here because he kept us healthy. At, at five years down the road or so, instead of putting $1.4 million in the pension plan, we're going to be putting in about $3 million. So we're going to have to start to, to really have a good look at all our expenses 
to make sure that we maintain that, that healthy pension plan and we don't ever have to freeze it and then have to start up a different type of plan. So while we're very healthy right now, we have about $24 million of unrestricted reserves. That's not counting the $9.3 million for operating reserves, $3.9 million for um, uh, capital reserve, and then a, a benefit reserve of about $700,000 or more in there. So we have about $13 million for reserves that we impose on ourselves, and then a $24 million on there. So right now we're really pretty healthy, and we're setting ourselves up for a very good 2021 with the $6.8 million. So you can always talk about a contribution, which would have to be like a one-time, like you're saying here, as opposed to amending the plan that we're from this day forth, and, and talk about long-term projections when we start looking at a five-year financial plan to see can we afford it and have it be sustainable for future expenses as well. The one thing that comes to mind when you, and I thought it was wonderful that we did the $2 an hour deal, but yes, sir. when you take that $2 away, I mean, it sure would be nice to, you know. The kind of a it's, good it's a thing. a tough thing to take away once you get it. And it was wonderful that we were able to do it, but. The kind of a good thing it is, it, it's, it's, we didn't take it away in, in like June where you would have seen it out of your check. It kind of almost evens out by the time you get your raise at the end of the year and take away that $2, it's almost a wash on a, on a lot of cases in there. So some people didn't see much of a difference in there, but of course you didn't see the increase from your raise on there because it, it canceled out from the $2 that we lost. Now the $6.8 million, that's something conversations we're going to have internally. If, if he wants, if somebody wants to do something for the employee during the course of the year, like IE or $2, then that, that's something that we could talk about as well in lieu of putting in money for a pension. But that's always a good I thought of when you have a good year, if you want to do something otherwise. Sounds like an item plan. we could probably discuss at the retreat. It would be a, a, an know. easier thing for a 401k plan that you just put X amount of dollars in versus the pension plan had set up the way you put money in. But uh, yes, sir, we can have a, a conversation about yeah, that. Yeah, I know it's a departure from the agenda item. So, but anyway, good report, Mr. Carr. <laughs> that's just off the top of my head. There are some Absolutely. things that we can talk about. Yeah. But I would like to echo what uh, Chairman Martinez just said and add this as a line item to discuss at our retreat. I mean, I think it, there's a lot of great ideas that can percolate when we're all sort of together, however that works. But thank you. Um, I also Thanks, concur. Chairman. I think that we don't know when, I mean, we can project, but we don't know when the funding, uh, additional support from the government is going to expire. And when it does, if it's if, if it's all of a sudden because of whatever catastrophe we may come in the future or whatever changes in the way that they fund us, yes, sir. Uh, that we probably should be looking at other ways to try to just to have all this extra money and not have some type of plan for it. So I, I totally agree with the chairman that we should discuss this and add it as an agenda item or a consideration for our, the retreat if others have made it. Any further sure. questions for Robert? Thank you, Robert. Um, sure. Continue to stay there. Uh, procurement update. Yes, sir. <laughs> Robert Saldana, Managing Director of Administration. This lines up with our public image and transparency. Right now we have one solicitation out. <coughs> we, as we're talking about December again. We don't have usually too many out during the course of the end of the year. Maintenance uniforms, it's a two-year agreement, about $60,000 for the two years. That should come to March committee and April board. We have uh, life and accidental um, dismemberment benefits. We're looking to exercise the, f the first of two final option years, about $90,000. We have occupational medical, which is our doctor center, kind of supplementing your, your insurance that we have. You go to doctor center for mild cases, about $96,000 exercised in the first of two option years. Bus brake system, exercising the second and final option year, about $280,000. Electric bus and engine parts, exercising the second of two option years, about $100,000 a year. Internal and external engine parts, we're exercising the second of two option years, about $318,000 a year. Bus engine supplies, a, a one year with a one year option, about $766,000 for the year. Uh, under the signature authority of the CEO, so all these will be $50,000 or less. We have two labor laws, um, Ruth Brooklyn and Walter, about $40,000 a year. And then Porter, Rogers, and Dahlman, about $40,000 a year as well. Heavy duty uh, vehicle filters, about $43,000 a year. And then towing services, a three-year agreement, about $26,000 for the three years. 
more under the CEO's signature authority. Um, IT-wise, service, uh, service support, about $19,000 a year. AT&T fleet complete, so in order to, uh, our buses could talk to each other via kind of an internet, about $20,000 a year. Janitorial services, about $30,000 a year as well. Typically, we only have one on here, the marina space. That is a true month to month, but we do have two annual contracts we have, and that's part of the Gordon's presentation earlier that he had, that we, <coughs> how we uh, take care of some of the rural areas. Real, we spend about $34,000 a year, and then Paisano, uh, we spend about almost 14, 13, 14 thousand dollars a year for that. And those are more annual contracts, but I want to throw them out there once in a while just to let you know that they're still out there. I'll field any questions. Any questions, comments? Procurement. Thank you, Robert. Item C, December 2020 Safety and Security Report. morning again. This is Director uh, Mike Rendon for uh, the uh, safety uh, security uh, report. And this is a, a board and priority facilities under safety and security. So the monthly uh, December collision rate uh, was at uh, 1.52 uh, for December we uh, had three collisions all determined uh, to be uh, preventable we ended up the year in a, on a low no note before I go any further I I, I want to acknowledge mr. Bob Lott is the uh, security owner of the step uh, and uh, every so often he uh, visits the uh, the area and making sure our security guards are doing uh, good for us CCRTA operators drove a little over 196,000 and brought the uh, December year-to-date year collision rate to 0 0.86. Uh, we had uh, 741 contacts, 82% uh, is a top three with the quality, quality of life, uh, 292. And then I have a, a couple extra slides to uh, comparison with 19 and 20. Total vehicle collisions of 2019 and 2020. Uh, 2019 we had 52 collisions compared to 2020 we had 22. Uh, total of 30 less collisions uh, for 2020. Very good year in, in that stat. Question. Can yes, we go back to the last slide? What is quality of life? I don't know that I've seen that one before. The, I might have. The quality of life is uh, our customers asking questions to our law enforcement, uh, you know, direction of, uh, of the buses, where they're going to. Uh, we have a, a lot of uh, just questions to law enforcement, but more important also is um, we have our customers that are not feeling well and they're asked for assistance and we get them a, an ambulance as soon as possible. Uh, so things like that, you know, happens in our transfer station. So it's not necessarily anything uh, that has nothing to do with criminal or no, activity. not that. That's that's more positive uh, contacts that we have with the with our community and our uh, customers. Okay. One more question for me, Mike. Does this really focus in on the transfer stations or also on the bunches with our rover running around? It's. Mostly, uh, I would say about 80 percent, 90 percent, 85 percent on transfer stations, which is our station outside here, Port Ayers, Robstown, and Southside, and then also the contacts that our police officer rover does uh, out there for his rovering. You know, talking to individuals or for maybe those individuals that are not utilizing our our system. You know, we approach them and then we we tell them to uh, move along. So yes also on the rover. 
So comparison, uh, 2019, 2020 on the collisions. Um, this, um, this is um, the comparison on, on the 2019 uh, and, uh, and 20 is that we had 52 accidents on, on the 2019 and then 22 on 2020, which just just mentioned a while ago. Um, on the preventable, non-preventable collision comparison, uh, as you can see that uh, on, the, on the red on 2019, we had uh, 15 preventable collisions. In 2020, we had eight. So it's about a 50% reduction compared to 19 and 20. And then on the, on the non preventable, we had on 2019, we had 37 collisions. And then on 2020, we had 14. So about 60% reduction. Are we attributing that to just people on the road less for 2020? Well, we, we are driving less uh, miles, uh, but at the same time, we're still on the road, you know, and, and uh, we're just, it, it all comes into the, uh, the training that uh, safety security does with all operators on, on videos of incidents and, uh, and our um, uh, supervisors that are out on the platforms. And I think I mentioned this before, you know, the, they observe the uh, drivers coming in, you know, what speed, are, are they are parking close to the curve, are they deploying the ramp properly? And then the, our supervisors get on the, uh, on the bus, you know, when they have a, a chance uh, and then they monitor the uh, the operator how he drives. Make sure he makes a full stop. Make sure he doesn't uh, run the, the uh, yellow light. You know, always being uh, proactive in their driving and be aware of their surroundings. So this is uh, what we've done in, in the last year. Okay, so. Uh, Comparison of 2019 and uh, 2020, uh, 2019 we have 6,699 contacts, and then on 20 we had 5,876, difference about 823. So there is, uh, of course, less people at the transfer station uh, due to lower, lower ridership. And then our last part is the security updates. I'll come back to security. Uh, street Center. When I do number two, which is the uh, Robson Police Department K9 unit, uh, we're back on schedule. We we had stopped for about four or five months due to the COVID. Uh, we're back in schedule. Last week they uh, they boarded uh, 13 buses at all stations combined, and and they did of course the health and welfare inspection. Uh, we always always get good compliments from our customers that they feel safe, that they see not only the uh, police officer, but the canine unit. Uh, also, our rover continues to do well. Our, our areas are concerned right now um, is the airline and uh, Williams area, Staples and Williams, and uh, the uh, HCB on port uh, bus stop. Um, they seem to mig migrate to the south side uh, and it's been a task for us in, in that area. It's been a task. You know, we're working with CCPD uh, crime unit to help us move these individuals away from our bus stops because some of the business owners uh, do have concern. Uh, bus stops don't create homeless population. They just happen to hang around them. So going back to the Staple Street Center, uh, right now, Monday through Thursday, we have about 70 individuals that go through our checkpoint and about 100 over the weekend, and that's due to the uh, weekend travel on, on Greyhound. Uh, you might have heard th this on the news. Um, last Thursday, uh, January 28th, approximately 10.30 uh, p.m., uh, there was an incident that happened at Caddy Corner to our building at the Stripes. Uh, there was a, an argument. Uh, individuals started running er everywhere. Uh, this particular one uh, ran towards uh, our clock tower and then all the way down on Mestina uh, and then turned left on uh, Artisian. Um, this individual uh, followed him and his vehicle. They had another argument in that area. 
Uh, he ran back towards uh, Waco and Mestina, and the individual was shot in the back and, uh, and fell right at the uh, exit to our employee parking lot. Uh, individuals in this area know that if there's anything going on wrong and they need help, they tend to migrate to our, to our area because they know there's security 24 hours a day. Uh, so this individual was shot in the back and expired there uh, moments later. We had a call from uh, CCPD um, asking if we could pull video from the area. Uh, our staff came in at 2 in the morning. It took a little while because there's like 30 cameras out there. We picked up the top four. And with that information, uh, we submitted it immediately to the, uh, to the CCPD. And uh, with that video, uh, was very instrumental in, in uh, apprehending within 30 hours. This is kind of quick, 30 hours to find out who did it. Uh, they apprehended 41-year-old uh, Robert Moore for the murder of um, Mr. Sherman uh, Greathouse, 31-year-old. Uh, Talked to the family that were out there. Uh, it was a sad situation. But this is just a perfect e example of having good relationship with our police department here and working together. And uh, we feel uh, with the leadership of our CEO, uh, kept him up to date on what was going on. And so it feels good that things like this happen and we're part of, of a successful investigation with the Corpus Christi Police Department. Questions? Questions, comments from Mike? Security? Thank you. Sure. Item D, December 2020 operations report. Good morning again, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Uh, Gordon Robinson, Director of Planning. Today's item is the December 2020 operations report. The board party for this item is public image and transparency. In terms of the highlights for the month, uh, we uh, boarded uh, just over 195,000 uh, passengers. Service hours uh, decreased by about 22% over last December in 2019, and revenue miles decreased about 26%. In terms of um, where we are, and where we've been in the past, you can see that in December, just over 195,000 has been basically what we've been seeing over the last several months, and uh, of course, lower than previous years. In terms of ridership by mode, you can see um, for the month of December, we finished about 51% down overall, uh, fixed route about the same, and then D line a little bit less in terms of a percent down. Year to date, uh, finished. Uh, 43.1% down, as I mentioned in the previous presentation, and fixed route uh, 43 and a half, and so forth. So, uh, continuing on here. Uh, on time performance, um, no issues there for December, 90%. Four month average at 93.1. In terms of impacts to our current uh, services out there in the month of December, we had about nine that were impacted by detours. At this time, though, since it is early February, we, we do have 12 now that are impacted by detours out there. In terms of B-Line, um, you can see that uh, 1.53 is the passengers per hour. Um, we're waiving the uh, standard for that item because of social distancing methods. Customer assistance forms, uh, we were at eight for uh, December as compared to the prior uh, year at seven. <coughs> Well, I was between road calls uh, with the large buses, 10,210, so it's definitely above our standard, so no issues there. And I can answer any questions at this time. Questions? Mr. Gordon? Mr. Gordon, uh, that was a very quick presentation, yet uh, effective and impressive, but could you kind of go back to the, uh, the cabs, please? Yes, sir. So what I'm seeing here is we've had a trend of lower calves than normal, probably because of the obvious focus on, on other things in the environment. But uh, out of all those calves, 
were any of them positives by chance? Oh, yes. Yes. Over the last several months, we've received commendations. That's correct, sir. Excellent. Just wanted to give you guys some kudos for that. So congratulations. I like seeing that. Considering all. Appreciate you and the team. Thank you, sir. Any other comments, questions? Mr. Chairman, this is Ann Bellman. Hello, uh, Ann. I would, I, I would like to ask Gordon if we are still trying to offer uh, one person per ride when when the availability is there on the B buses. Yes, yes, that's still the uh, approach at this time. Uh, again, just to honor the okay. social distancing. Mm -hmm. Right, right. But uh, I do appreciate that. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? Thank you, Gordon. Item 12 is CEO's report. Yes, so board members, uh, just, just reminders that uh, on Friday, February 5th at 10 o'clock in the morning at CCISD, Rose Park Memorial dedication will occur at the new bus stop at Cunningham and South Park. Uh, just to remind the board to hopefully put on your calendar if you could. Look to see you there. And then uh, uh, we come to a date of Friday, uh, March 26th at the Solomon Ortiz Center uh, for the uh, next upcoming board report. So hope that works. Uh, through the survey that we did, uh, that's the, the date that we have the, the most uh, uh, agreement on availability. So we just hope you can do it, March 26th, Friday. Thank you. Yeah, we hope you, everybody can make it. And unfortunately, I will not be able to attend. I've got a commitment for this uh, Friday, but if any other board members can attend, it's much appreciated. Uh, item 13 is, is board chair's report. Uh, again, I'll share this with, the, with our board member for any any comments uh, but please make them quick as we've got the closed session item to take care of vice chairman reeves any cur any comments sir not at this time thank you mr chairman okay secretary Leindecker, any comments sir no mr chairman not right now thank you thank you director allison any comments no no thank you thanks to the staff for all the great reports Director Bowman, any comments? No, but I want to offer a great big thank you to everyone. Sure. Thank you, Ann. Uh, Director Jimenez, any comments? No comments from me at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Director Martin, any comments, sir? No, I'm good, Eddie. Thank, thank you. Uh, Director Salazar, any comments, sir? No, not at this time. Thank you. Director Kabarkic, any comments, sir? Thank you. Uh, great performance and a tough year, guys. Good job. Thank you. Director Wilbright, any comments, sir? Nope. Um, I would just echo, great year. Uh, you guys did a fantastic job. I was very uh, impressed by the ending numbers. Uh, I was glad to be in the black. So great job overall by staff. Uh, I want to thank you all for your job uh, diligence this year. Um, okay. Uh, we will... Be, item 14 will be discussion in closed session and uh, possible action under uh, section 551.074 of the Texas Open Meetings Act. The board of directors will go into closed session in order to discuss this agenda item, discussion concerning the CEO's evaluation and employment agreement. Um, do I need to state the time at this time? Okay. For board members that are virtual I believe you have a separate link that has been sent to you uh, please commence to log into the separate link uh, for the closed session not in okay. yes sir we'll take a we'll take a five minute recess yeah as well take care of